we're going to explode some way mist today. Most people would say debunking, but Heather's been really fixed on this exploding. You can explode myths, it's a popular idiom. Is it? Thing. Yeah, you, you explode myths. Really? Uh huh. Is it, do you not think maybe you've heard explore myths? <laughs> no. <laughs> Anyways, today we're just gonna explode some myths. Um, so, but we're drinking this Julianus wine from Beaujolais. Also, the light might vary a little bit in this episode because we're using natural light because it's the middle of the afternoon. Yeah, so we're gonna debunk, explode, diffuse, smash, while up some wine myths today. Yeah. Okay. So, what what one do you want to do first? <laughs> cheap shit wine and you can have cheap good wine, you can have expensive good wine and you can have expensive shit wine as well. Um, so what, why don't we talk about, um, uh, just to interrupt you there, <laughs> <laughs> how do you like a taste of your own medicine? <laughs> I like it fine. When you're buying a bottle of wine, where does your money go? Okay, so when you buy a bottle of wine like this one here, which was probably about a tenner incidentally. Just ten pounds fifty. Um, your wine goes on a bunch of different things, um, tax, okay, especially in the UK. You're paying for the glass that the wine goes in. The travel. The yeah, so import. the import. But also different wines are going to cost different amounts of money to produce. So um, if the grapes are hand picked, that's going to cost a lot more money um, than if you're able to machine harvest the grapes or if you choose to machine harvest the grapes. In addition to that, your money's going on the wine itself. Speaking of shite wines, uh, I don't know if I can drink any more of this. You're not keen? But if you're looking at, so what that does is, it doesn't say that expensive wines are better than, than more affordable wines. What it does say is, if you're gonna go rock rock bottom and if you're only gonna spend I think the cheapest kind of wine that you can get is like a fiver. If you're only gonna spend a fiver in your wine. You've not paid for any of the actual grapes. Yeah, You've kinda just you, paid for you, the tax and the bottle and the sending over. Your wine's costing fifty pence basically. Which And they've chucked a bunch of stuff into it. Yeah. Which is cats. fine and and that doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean it's gonna be terrible, but it kinda increases the chances that it's gonna be terrible. She's thrilled to find out about wine mix. I think she's actually just wanting her dinner. What you do is you need to try different wines and see what you like. Um, like I don't really like this one. But the price point where you're going to get kind of quite good value for your money is t in the UK tends to be between 10 and 20 pounds for, for wine. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. That's a great point that we haven't <laughs> mentioned is it's so subjective. So good wine is totally subjective. We can talk about point scales and stuff like that another time because that's a whew, whole other It's another of, episode, really. It's another episode. Um, but it's subjective. So, mm. like, we can have a £20 wine and Heather can go, oh, yeah, that's the shit. And I can go, not spunking pants about it. Um, <laughs> and then we can have a £10 wine and I can go, oh, my God, that's absolutely amazing. And Heather goes, what? What are you talking about, Louise? What, what's your, what's your what deal? crack have you been smoking? Anyway, I'm going to feed the cat. Mm -hmm. Do you know, no, 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 no. For you? Yeah. But we're going out soon and we're going to drink wine when we're out. Could take a bottle with us. Go for it. So tonight we're going to do a live study of whether or not it's inappropriate to turn up to a dinner party with open wine. <laughs> <laughs> right, now that you've decided that you don't like this, I've decided that I prefer the one that you're about to open as well. Can we do this first? This is a nice, um, this is a nice segue into, uh, as I'm opening this bottle, into something that we've actually talked about before, which is corks versus screw caps. So, Heather, give us a, give us like a thirty second like, on. Uh, Both are bottle closures for wine. One is more traditional, which is the cork, and tends to be used in old world wines. That's wines from France and Italy and Spain. 
Uh, one is a little bit more modern and tends to be used in New World wines, that's wines from uh, South America, sometimes North America, but predominantly uh, screw caps are used in Australia and New Zealand. A lot of people argue, particularly people um, who are fans of old world wine, that the only quality wine or the only age-worthy wine is um, wine with a, a cork closure, but that is not necessarily the case. However, I like a, I like a cork more. Because it was but not convenient for travel, such as train wine. So we're going to talk about um, another wine myth. And the myth is that old wines it's a good prop, isn't it? are going to be better than young wines. And well, what do you think? Is that the case? Well. When I first started drinking wine, I really thought that the older the wine, the better it was. Now, some wines, like aging them, gives them a little bit more complexity and allows the like flavors to develop. A little bit more, what's Gives them a little bit more complexity and also allows things to chill out a little bit, such as like harsh tannins. But the thing is that when it, it goes, like qualities. yeah, uh, when it goes into so once it's in the bottle, if you have a 1990 vintage. If it's went into that bottle and it's out of balance, so say it's like really high tannins, it'll come out with really high tannins. It won't just like soften, it'll soften everything. Everything has to be in balance. This, the acidity, the fruits and the tannins all have to be like just right in order to be aged. Mm -hmm. Most wine, I think 90% of wine, actually is meant to be drank within three to five years. So don't think that that bottle of Blossom Hill at your mum's house, which is what I found <laughs> from like 2001. The dusty bottle of Blossom Hill from 2001 is probably going to taste quite boofing. There are some, we've got some wines over there that are actually meant to be aged and they're going to taste better in 10 or in 20 years time. Um, and if that's the case, then yes, that wine is going to taste better when it's older. Oh. Um, but not every wine is, is made for that. Uh, what are you? Oh, no, oh that's what's so good, about good. It? What's good about it? Right, one. Mm. The other thing about this is. Oh my uh, god, that is good. Another thing to think about. Hazelnuts? Sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> right. Another thing to think about when you're like um, tasting wines. So like we've got like age. We've got whether or not they've got a cork. Whether or not they're expensive. It's whether or not you're having a good time when you drink them. So because we had such a good time in Rioja, we are gonna love all of the wines. Uh, we know how they were produced, we met people that were to do with them, we we have context for that wine. One thing that Heather and I have that really, really influences our happiness as when it comes to like whether or not we're going to enjoy a wine is actually whether or not we have context for that wine. So whether or not we've been told a story about the vineyards, whether or not it's a big producer or it's some guy out the back with his wheelbarrow, you know, like those kind of things really, really influence us because we... We love a story. Or if we've tried it at a moment when we're just really buzzed or happy. Yeah. Well, this I, this tastes fucking amazing. Does yeah. it have legs on it though? Oh, that's our <laughs> next myth. Talking about legs. <laughs> at wine tastings, you'll see a lot of people do what Heather's doing right now. And look at the legs. So what happens is you tilt the wine in the glass and you look at it and the legs are basically just kind of strings that you see coming down from the side of the glass. And the myth is that these legs, if you see these legs, or if they last for a long time, that they're an indicator of quality in the wine. Are they an indicator of quality in the wine? No, they're actually an indicator of alcohol content. However... So if what you're looking for in your wine is alcohol content... Yes. However, there's a slight little cravat to that. Mm. It's called a caveat. <laughs> Not a caveat. There's lots of um, rules and regulations when it comes to wine production, and one of them in Rioja and also in Priora is that it has to be, there's a minimum alcohol content that it has to be. If you have something that's not very leggy, you can go, mm, that that's probably not got enough alcohol content in it and it's not high quality enough. Ten legs, you should years. always, you should look at the, the legs. You should still look at them, but it's not going to tell you whether you're going to like the wine or not, or if it's, if it's a higher quality wine. No. I did this for years, and I was wrong. 
I got this from my mum actually, you know like when your mum opens a bottle of champagne or Prosecco or Cava and then bungs it in the fridge with a spoon in it to keep it fresh, doesn't work. Does doesn't work. nothing. Does fuck all. The spoon does absolutely fuck all, except for just- Who said that? Who was like, oh I'll just put a spoon in it? It's like the trendy, baby. the trendy thing just now. So many people have told us this shit. Mm -hmm. And actual, I don't want to slag it. People have messaged us to lecture us about the fact that we should drink natural wine because natural wine will not give you a hangover. I would say it wasn't really a lecture. It was more like a mansplaining of sulfites mm -hmm. to us. Yeah, which was fun. So this is. Uh, natural wine that we are really excited to try. Louise is really excited to try it. We love trying different types of wine and we love trying natural wines and this is one that we're really excited about. But I can guarantee you that if I tan this bottle, even though it has reduced sulfites because it's been produced in a really natural way, I will wake up tomorrow morning with a hangover that will... Because the sulfates don't have anything to do with the hangover. It's the alcohol. It's the alcohol. So if you drink six bottles of uh, natural wine, you'll still wake up with alcohol poisoning and, and the worst hang hangover of your life. The thing is, as well though, that natural wines tend to be a little bit lower in alcohol, so maybe people go, oh, usually on two large glasses of wine, I can feel it the next day. And maybe if they're having two large glasses of... Maybe that's how this happened. My wine's so much better than your wine. I know, I'm sorry. Can I sniff your wine again? Can I just, just drink? Thanks. This week's been a really good week. Glasgow had its one day, its one annual day of sunshine, and we went out into the sunshine. We surprised in the sun. We surprised in the sun. So that's another myth. You can surprise with anything because we didn't have any swords with us, we only had two small bottles of camera. Hey.